Gemini Collective, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus sign. Welcome to your seven card draw. What do I need read for this uh, full moon in January to new moon in February 2022? Happy New Year. I am your reader, Mark Angelo Lyons Mal for short. Professional witch, professional intuitive, president of Drawing the Circle Productions since 1998, author of Words of Grace from a Professional Witch, available on Kindle, link in the description box, and now with a Patreon platform, enjoying myself over there massively. Link in the description box, check it out, because I'm the Archangel of Lions, Mark Angelo Lions, but you can call me Mal and pay my gems. Uh, Mercury goes retrograde tomorrow at the time of this recording, and my morning has been, as they like to say, the Klusterfuck. Ooh, my coffee pot overflowed. There were grains in the second pot that I made. Unacceptable, but part of the game. And I mention this particularly because you are Geminis. You are ruled uh, by the planet Mercury. It doesn't actually stop and go backwards. And <laughs> it's not trying to parallel park. It's an optical illusion. And yet, uh, because so many people put their thought and energy and belief and fret into it, it has become a sort of global spell for thousands of years, if you want to look at it that way. So uh, just be aware of that as we go, because we are doing a shadow read, the waning moon, full to new. So if you are new to the channel, a seven card draw is just one card from seven different decks, getting you clues, tips, and hints on how to navigate that. It's what do I need reading, not what do I want. Asking the divine for a little GPS POV, right? So uh, it is a general read. Take what resonates, leave what doesn't. Check your other signs because we don't have just one scenario going on. And honestly, five cards out of seven, if they resonate, that's a good read for a general. You want a private read? There's a link in the description box. Let's look at the astrology. Uh, full moon on Monday, January 17th, 6.48 p.m. Eastern Time. I'm in New York. Uh, good time. But here's the tea on this one. Uh, it, it's in Cancer, a full moon in Cancer, but it goes void, of course, at the same time. So it's still a full moon. Uh, but if you're going to do magic, catch it on the waxing side. Just do it before then. You can even do it the, the night before on a Sunday. Check the deets on that. Uh, but then we're doing the waning, the letting go, the releasing, the healing, the alchemy from light to gold, shadow to light, all of that. Forgiveness, surrender, all the fun stuff to the new moon on Tuesday, February 1st, which is also in bulk or Candlemas. On, uh, in bulk is the, the pagan part of it, <laughs> in, the, in the pagan wheel of the year, uh, at 12.45 a.m., so a little bit after midnight, 45 minutes after midnight in Aquarius. And by the way, uh, uh, I believe Mercury is going retrograde in Aquarius. In other words, it's there right now. It's slowing down. It's going to back up. It's going to go back into Capricorn before it heads forward again. And I don't know how long this one is. <laughs> Google it. <laughs> you can write it down. Uh, but there you go. The letting go, right, from a Cancer, a, a water moon, to... Uh, Aquarius and air moon. So uh, let's see what hits the table. Uh, both feet on the floor if you can. Let me do that myself. Focus on your breath if you will. And I will do the same uh, to help out the Geminis out there, you third housers. Let's see how this goes. Please take a nice deep breath. Help me. <laughs> Help me, my pantheons. Use me. Give me the words. As I call upon the collective pantheons of angels, archangels, goddesses, gods, ascended masters of the general assembly, the higher selves of all involved, fifth dimension and above, eighth chakra and above, the spirit animals and totems, as well as the pantheons of all pantheons, for the Gemini collective, sun, moon, rising, Venus, I'm watching this video, receiving this reading, give me the Caroline Mace, uh, eighth chakra, dynamic archetype hovering over their head, right? Uh, affecting every chakra, every energy system underneath it, uh, what they attract, what they repel, this waning moon, uh, uh, January into February, the liberator. 
Love it, love it. Now, as brilliant as an archetype sounds, they're all neutral. It's as toxic as uh, <laughs> as it can be as well, and vice versa. Like the vampire archetype in the shadow is a nightmare, but in its light, it's the vampire hunter, the vampire slayer, and sometimes if you master the skill, the vampire healer. Uh, 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 but the, the liberator certainly is one that sounds great, but let's look at the shadow and the light here. The shadow indicates the type of shadow work adjacent maybe in a general read the light is what you're shooting for or the hidden blessing last card down we'll take a deeper look at that hidden blessing the shadow attribute imposing your tyranny over those you claim to liberate not fun ignoring legitimate constraints and i'm sorry the best example i can think of is you know somebody is in a 12-step process they're at a party and uh, uh somebody walks up and goes come on you'll be an asshole have a drink right like that's ignoring a legitimate you're not liberating anybody there uh the light attribute freeing yourself and others from outmoded beliefs, releasing negative thought patterns, which is perfect, by the way, for a Gemini during Mercury retrograde. It can be exactly that. So I wonder how much of it, if we really kind of work the mental part of it, see things differently, will we have maybe less uh, cacophony going on, <laughs> less uh, mechanical kerfuffle and delays and miscommunications, uh, because honestly, I think the message of Mercury Retrograde is slow the fuck down. Slow your roll, right? Rethink this. So perfect. Right on target. Uh, let's get the next four chakras down. The, cr the crown, the third eye, the throat, and the heart. Your internal world, your internal world, your feminine energy, your psychology, whatever you want to call that world behind your eyes. Please take a nice deep breath. As I call upon the goddesses of air, the sign of Gemini, uh, direction of the east, please, for the Gemini Collective, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, I'm watching this video, receiving this reading with the Liberator on the 8th. What's going on in their internal world? You got the Emperor slash Hierophant, Daughters of the Moon, Tarot is a feminist deck. So it doesn't use, uh, it doesn't overly use um, patriarchal imagery like the devil. Uh, even this card that would be either the Emperor or the Hierophant, both divine masculine energies, it's called Pan. Uh, and, and different, not just the goat headed god, although is a, there is a goat in the artwork here. Uh, uh, Pan, the healthy, divine, masculine energy. I think this came up in one of uh, the readings yesterday, Aries or Taurus. And you say, I shuffle them. <laughs> I shuffle these cards. You're watching me do it. My eyes are closed most of the time when I'm shuffling. So this is about manning up, so to speak. <laughs> it's gender, but you know what I mean. To be the emperor. If it was the empress, it would be a different vibe, but still the same level of power here. So uh, all the kings in the tarot, the court cards, come together to uh, make the emperor. And that's what I said. It's like this Mercury retrograde might actually work to your benefit. Now I'm a Virgo, also ruled uh, uh, by the planet Mercury, but we'll see. <laughs> a few more readings uh, before we get there to see what that's about. But I'm hoping that that is something that the Virgo mind can also play with liberators. Totally great. Change the way you see Mercury retrograde. Like, start there, little by little. Not all at once. Uh, it might take a while. Because <laughs> you don't want to... Well, I mean, do you want to buck all the negativity around it? Or say, all right, well, what's the other flow? What's the other... Right? Twins. Well, okay. What's this one say? Oh. Lower three chakras. Uh, the outside world. Uh, the physical level of power, uh, the masculine energy, the energy, how it's going out uh, into the world might be you from the outside looking in or you in the inside looking out, but often it is both of those things. And it's a general read. Lower three chakras are all about relationships, root chakra, tribes, groups, societies, political parties, all that you're connected to. Second chakra, one-on-one -on -one relationships, not just with other people, but with money. Just to know that, right? You and another object, a substance, right? Whatever. Talk about liberating uh, yourself and others. Uh, and uh, solar plexus, your relationship to yourself, your personal power your gut intuition that no one else is going to get but you, uh, uh, even if they do, it's still yours, uh, and your honor code, your boundaries, what you will, what you want, what you do, what you don't. Breathe. Feet. As I call upon my gods of air, 
<laughs> sign of Gemini and powers of the East. What's going on for the Gemini Collective? Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, Sun. Watching this video, receiving this reading. Liberator on the in in the eighth chakra. Pan, the Emperor Hierophant on the inner, which speaks of stages of growth as well. Commitment, but also getting things in order and control. Uh, I get that. So what's going on uh, in their lower three chakras? Uh, the physical part of this, this full to new. The Empress, can you dig it? Just said it. <laughs> You're large and in charge. I think you've got everything that you need. You may not be at that place right now, but I have to say, for a waning moon read, this is a question of alchemy, right? So if you're helping people, liberating them, I would expect nothing in return right now, uh, or imposing your tyranny on them. Well, I paid that bill for you. You need to da 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 Now you negotiate that before you do it. <laughs> right? That's a, a fair exchange, right? The law, what is that? Um, the law of equivalency, right? Uh, uh, the emperor on the inner and the empress on the outer, however, I will say is kind of a flip on the yin-yang dynamic, so I'm digging that big time. So this can very much be, or you might be dealing with an empress kind of vibe in your life, a person in your life. Uh, and who's doing the liberating? Maybe it is a co-liberation, like I said, that equal law of equivalent exchange. Thank you, Full Metal Alchemist Spirit Guides. Appreciate it. Uh, great. <laughs> I've got geek spirit guides. I'm good. I love that. I'm a DC Comics geek. It's okay. The number of Wonder Woman's behind me. <laughs> I should change them every day and like do a contest. Count the right number and win. I don't know. Free 10 second rating. <laughs> You're cute done. Uh, 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 this is powerful. This is powerful. Two major arcana cards. And this is the third reading of this series where both uh, tarot cards, because there's only two in the seven card spread, are major arcana. Yeah, this might be, we might be going through a bigger deal than we realize. So let's get a healing mantra for you from the Healing Mantra deck by Matt Kahn. I find these give a little bit more detail, but work the mantra. <laughs> work the mantra every day as often as you can, because I think air signs have a, a bit of a leg up when it comes to mantras, right? Please take a nice deep breath. Particularly with liberation on the table. Yeah, I call to the Ascended Masters for the Gemini Collective, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, Sign, watching this video, receiving this reading, General Assembly. What's the perfect healing mantra to help them alchemize uh, this liberator archetype pattern that they're dealing with? Empress on, uh, Emperor on the inner, which, you know, they have what they need. It's just doing it on the inside. And on the outer being the Empress, that magnetic force to draw to them what they need. The Empress does not run around the Empire. She sits, she lounges, she commands, yet attracts. So with that Liberator archetype, very, very important that that moves into uh, the, the gold, the light there for them and whoever they're dealing with. So give them the perfect healing mantra to clarify, help, and heal them. Discovering happiness. I allow myself to be content exactly as I am. That is just what I said. That is just what I said uh, for that Empress archetype. I'm going to read it from the bookie book. But Gems, this is an exciting read. Um, but what's the shadow part of it, right? Uh, discovering uh, happiness. I allow myself to be content exactly as I am. And as a sidebar, I've used this mantra while doing breath work, Wim Hof breath, uh, on, on the retained uh, exhales as well as the last uh, inhale. Shoot the energy up to the third eye, W-I-M-H-O-F. Trust me. Just Google it. Uh, when happiness is discovered, you are inspired, excited, and passionate about the gift of being alive. There is a willingness to open your heart to the mystery of each moment, whether you're getting what you want or witnessing unexpected outcomes. Mercury retrograde, white courtesy telephone. Uh, this discovery of happiness frees you from needing life to bring you more of this or less of that. 
the true joy of being yourself has dawned. And I think that's what we're looking at here. It's not about you rearranging deck chairs on the Titanic, right? It's such a great metaphor. I love that. No, it is about being that magnetic force, right? Being content as you are, regardless of what's going on on the inside. But that's going to take a certain kind of mastery uh, if you have uh, a little control freaky deaky going on. Everybody has their control freak about something. Uh, but to liberate yourself and hence liberate others, this kicks ass. This kicks third eye ass. Uh, this mantra is ideal for facing disappointment, developing self-approval, and feeling fulfilled. And I'm going to say, with these two, it's got to be that feeling fulfilled, dominant. I mean, it'll be all of it, but dominant. Lovely. Loving this read. You know what? It's not just outrageous. It's not just truly outrageous. You know the rest. You gems. Uh, what's the higher selves say? The Whispers of Love Oracle. I like to call it the Party Turner deck because this is where the romance card or something, true love card hits the table or something else. Uh, so this is, uh, by the way, the higher selves of all involved, not just you. So this is like the group uh, that you're dealing with here if, that, uh, if that's your situation. Please take a nice deep breath. All right. The higher selves of all involved. Fifth dimension and above, eighth chakra and above. What is the whisper of love for the Gemini Collective? Sun, moon, rising, Venus. I'm watching this video, receiving this reading. Liberator in the eighth. Emperor on the inner. Empress on the outer. Discovering happiness. Allowing themselves to be content exactly as they are. What is the piece of information, inspiration, insight, guidance, and grace the higher selves have for the Gemini this full to new? Uh, January, February 2022. Spiritual connection. Told you. The party hath been turned. This relationship has a connection that goes beyond this lifetime. Who's liberating who? You've done this before with this soul. You know, we're not always lovers in every life. We're not always parents to each other in every life. It changes up. The soul is the genderless, <laughs> apolitical, right, ageless, birthless, deathless thing. The immortal. That's why I teach human hero, immortal god. Oh, on uh, Facebook, my podcasts are those classes that I did on Facebook and I'm doing on Facebook, edited uh, for the public. Didn't know that when I was starting. Uh, so check them out. They're good. Entire classes. Some of them run two hours. <laughs> you don't expect anybody to sit through them all at once. Uh, but this certainly speaks of a soul contract. This is a soul contract now. That change that has turned the party. Yes, this could be about money and health and family and all of that stuff. Spiritual connection doesn't immediately mean romantic but we're not done yet. <laughs> Let's see. Let's uh, see. Because if you're going to do some shadow work, call to the, the, the animal pantheon, right? Uh, the Divine Animals Oracle by Stacey DeMarco. Love this book. Tons of info in the bookie book. I just read uh, the verbal thumbnail and the magic little paragraph that it has in there. Uh, so sometimes this just calls it right out. Please take a nice deep breath. I'm going to ask for that for you. As I call upon the spirit animals and totems for the Gemini Collective, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, Sun, watching this video, receiving this reading, what is that feeling? Please, who walks with them? Who crawls with them? Who flies with them? Who swims with them? Through the shadow work as guardian and guide for the Gemini Collective, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, I'm watching this video, receiving this reading, Liberator in the Eighth Chakra, Emperor on the Inner, Empress on the Outer, discovering happiness in a spiritual connection that this goes beyond this lifetime. Please, the Divine Animals Oracle, make this specific for whoever is watching to the best that you can for a general read. This full to new, Jan Feb 2-2. The sea otter. I love otters. Both the human and the, the species variety. Ugh, I love otters. I love otters. I'm a lion. You know, in the gay pantheon, we all have our totems. Transformation. Okay. Okay, but it's not that phoenix transformation, right? It's not that going to fire, uh, rising to ashes and all that. Card number 18. 
white type on a mm, open dry to it pretty much. Oh, let's just do it. Please take a nice deep breath. Remember to breathe. Card number 12, Sea Otter. Uh, transformation. Uh, transformation is a true constant if we allow it. That's the T, the truth. Pink lemonade optional. Uh, uh, we can change our future and learn from our past. We should only try to transform ourselves, not someone else, as this is against free will. Well, that's just an ethical conversation for another day, isn't it? <laughs> Did I mention I was a professional witch? Do not judge others too quickly or harshly. Relax a little and rise. Look at this differently. This is big time about uh, liberating yourself. It absolutely is. I think you are the prime recipient but it does say, don't try and transform the other person. Now, to me, the ethical line there is the thing I learned from Abraham Hicks well over a decade ago. Don't answer questions that haven't been asked. You know what you should do? No, but you're going to fucking tell me anyway. I mean, already my walls go up, right? And during a Mercury retrograde, you, we may not be seeing things clearly, and maybe we haven't been seeing things clearly, so it's time to go back. This relationship has a connection that goes beyond this lifetime. So this is something you want to nail to the best of your ability. Let's see what the magic is. I mean, otters are anything but playful. I see those videos of people in, you know, you go to a place, you sit in a hot tub, and they like, <laughs> not full of otters, but I want to do that in this life. I want to do that. Breathe. The magic. In almost every culture that has mythos around otters, they are seen as highly magical, intelligent, and certainly transformational creatures. When you are doing magic, uh, magical workings to transform yourself from one state to another, their energy will be welcome, like going from lead to gold. In this archetypal pattern, this is pretty on the mark pun intended. Uh, uh, otter magic also encourages you, to encourages you to let go of your burdens and be lighter. Remember what it is like to float on your back. Oh, I want to go swimming. Uh, I'm, I'm a Pisces swimmer. I love to swim. Uh, tense up and you sink. That's, that's the, the truth. Uh, the more you relax, the higher you rise. Work. You really got to look at this differently. This is like a perfect Gemini uh, read here. Now, yes, there's a strong element of water here. So you got planets and water. I'll keep an eye on that. But with transformation, you can't unburn a cookie. There's no going back from a transformation, right? You don't rise from the ashes and then put those ashes back together. There's no backwards. Um, <clears throat> different than a state change, solid, liquid, gas, right? Air, water, uh, ice, which would be the element of earth, something solid that can go back and forth. This is going to be a big deal for you, particularly whoever has come to help you. And I'm going to put help you in quotes. You might have to look at that from different sides because sometimes the people who drive us up the wall the most, who dance on our buttons, working our last nerve are our greatest teachers. Let's just get the last card down. <laughs> and what a good card it's going to be, no matter what it is, the blessed be, the hidden blessing here that comes out of the alchemy. The pantheon of all pantheons, right? The final word. I love this book. Uh, Lucy Cavendish. I'm trying to break myself of that habit. But she's got the coolest name for what she does, creating the mystical Celtic blessing cards to enrich and empower, as well as uh, uh, that magic, that's magical spell cards deck. Love those. Breathe. Hmm, yeah, I surrender as we call upon the pantheon of all pantheons, all cultures, all traditions, all lineages, even that starseed stuff, if they're into it. Please, one card in clarity from the Blessed Be deck. What is the hidden blessing here? Uh, the, the gold at the end of the alchemical journey here for the Gemini Collective Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, Sun, watching this video, receiving this reading, so that they free themselves and others from outmoded beliefs 
uh, uh, re uh, releasing negative thought patterns, seeing things differently, not judging others during this Mercury retrograde, with the Emperor on the inner and the Empress on the outer, discovering happiness, allowing themselves to be content, to float on their back, exactly as they are in this spiritual connection, this relationship that goes beyond this lifetime, through this time of transformation with the sea otter to lighten their load to float if they do all that to the best of their ability and no one crosses every t and dots every i all the time in this stuff what is the hidden blessing for them this full to new january february 2022 a blessing on a journey a blessing on a journey and get that that can be a retrograde mercury retrograde it's a journey so to speak your journey through it so this may not be literal but it could be general read please comment if you are literally going to be traveling during mercury retrograde i don't know if i've mentioned it before uh, in the gemini reads but uh, my new year's resolution was to leave the house less often than I did last year. Uh, so let me read this. I do these blessings for real uh, so that the energy pulse flows through me. I say it before I, you know, I, I hit record. So both feet on the floor if you can. And breathe. Let's do this, pantheons of pantheons. Use me. Let's go. Card number 22. A blessing on a journey. A blessing on your time away from home and on the road. A blessing on the in-between, the liminal space, the borderlands you will inhabit. May the road you take be blessed as you begin this journey into the unknown. Mercury retrograde journey, probably. That's life in general. For while you may have plans and a map and compass to guide you, there is much that will surprise and amaze you. Point made. Uh, may the leaving of home be done with ease, knowing all will be safe until you return to its shelter once more. May you experience the joy of anticipation. Let the moment of embarkation be a great thrill when you take flight or board ship or car or whatever vehicle it is that will set you safely across that will see you safely across the miles let there be elation may you encounter kindness upon the road strangers who show you the very best of themselves and may there be hospitality and delightful turns of good luck serendipitous meetings and meetings and quiet moments too so you can fully absorb the adventures of each day may the adventurous spirit within you be delighted by your wanderings and may you relish to the full each day upon the strange road you are traveling, you Geminis. May the purpose of the journey be blessed. Whether you leave uh, excited or reluctant, may whatever trip you take be fulfilled in its spirit. And may the days fill themselves with future memories that will feed your soul for years to come. May the skies shine down on you. May the plans you made be exceeded by their reality. That's hot. May you all go more, uh, may all go more than well for you. And when it comes time to return home, traveler, may your home open its arms up and take you in and may there be friends with whom to tell the tales of the road and share the gifts uh, you have returned with. Arrive home safely, enriched with discovery, inspired and open-hearted and full of love for this world we dwell within. For it is a, uh, a wondrous for it is wondrous so, for it is wondrous for it is wondrous and this you have found to be the truth. For the well-being of all, and with harm to none, 
as we will it. So let it be done. So let it be. So it is. Blessed be, right? The liberator. There's a lot of mind work going on here, right? And you've got the skill to do it and you're going to develop it and you're going to be magnetic. You're going to allow yourself to be content exactly as you are, right? Allowing being the key. That's a mental part of it big time in this spiritual connection where you float on your back and transform yourself and watch everybody be liberated, maybe to a greater or lesser extent on a journey. And I'm really getting for a lot of you, this is a metaphoric journey, a spiritual journey, a healing journey, but nonetheless, that blessing doth apply. So did you like the reading? Then please like it. Help the Gemini's uh, find it out there. Do you want more of me? Subscribe here on YouTube because I'm not stopping anytime soon as far as I know. Retrogrades or not. Just wait till Uranus goes retrograde. Happens to all of us sooner or later. And certainly if you want to come play, come play Patreon on Patreon. Patreon.com. Join the circle. So very thrilled over there. Uh, so I hope you are well. Comment below if you can. What is this about? Uh, what is your journey about? One or two words is cool, but go for it. You're Gemini's, you're verbose. Thank you for watching. Wishing you the very best and the very blessed this full to new uh, January to February uh, 2022. Here comes the garbage truck. Perfect timing. Yay, Mercury retrograde. Uh, stay outrageous. Stay truly, truly, truly outrageous. Now, farewell. And blessed, blessed be.